Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're installing the flow sensor on our supercharger intercooler system. That's going to data log the fluid flow, feed it right into the MS3, we can capture it in our data log, see it on the gauges, and we can tell exactly when the pump's cavitating and uh, just figure out what we're going to do about that. The previous video was about the intercooler tank repairs and it kind of rolls right into this. So if you haven't seen that first, check it out, I'll link it down below. This video is going to pick up right at that point where we're troubleshooting the flow sensor. Uh, we're going to go through and get that figured out. Once we've got it working, I'm going to jump into uh, some explanation, tell you how it works and how it feeds with the MS3 and uh, we can go from there. So let's get to the action. So my flow sensor I installed it seemed to work just fine when I tested it initially. I just blew through it with my mouth and I got readings up here on my um, laptop and I could see everything working on the MS3. However, it's not working right now. Not with the pump flowing properly, but I do see readings on my scope that shows me the sensor is working. For some reason, the MS3 is ignoring the reading at this point. So I need to figure out what's going on, where the breakdown is. So that doesn't make sense. I spun the sensor with compressed air to simulate the pump blowing through just like how it was. And now it's registering the MS3 just fine. And I made sure I spun it up to the exact same frequency. Actually, I went to three times the frequency and it's still reading in just fine. So something weird's happening either when fluid's going through it or when that pump is turning or maybe it's interfering with the signal. I need to do a little bit more experimenting. All right, turn it off. That was working perfectly fine. All right, so now I'm about to turn the pump on the intercooler pump, and then I'm going to flow test it here to see what happens. So let's get the pump on. Okay, turn the, the hose on. Okay, turn the turn the hose on. There it is. It's working. We got it. Turn it off. All right, the sensor is working. So I just learned the hard way that when you put the ECU into test mode. It ignores the digital frequency inputs. So the whole time it looked like it was dead and not registering was simply because I was putting it in test mode. Uh, I turned the pump on by switching the parameters so that it changed the conditions. Basically, I told it if the engine RPM is zero, turn the pump on. So basically just a key on, turn the pump on without going into test mode and it's fixed. All right, back to the regular scheduled uh, programming. <laughs> all right, now that we got the sensor figured out, let me actually show you the setup and what's going on and what this is all about. So right here, in the, the output of the EMP pump, I have this flow sensor. It's a one inch diameter, It'll, it should have minimal resistance on the flow, I mean there is an impeller in there. It essentially has a Hall effect sensor in there, so it has a 5 volt, a ground, and then a sensor wire that's going to send square wave pulsed outputs of the impeller spinning. And that's going to come up here, and we can actually see that now. We will have, um, I just put pump flow rate is what I call the gauge. And we can actually just turn that on real quick and not with uh, test mode. <laughs> I heard the relay snap. There's a little delay as the EMP pump goes to turn on by its own controller. And we can hear it. There it goes. And look at that. So we're getting about, what is that? About 25 units on the pulses coming up. I have it um, divided by a formula. Exact flow is not really important so much as just monitoring that we have flow. And of course we can see the actual um, intercooler temp as well. So we're, we're sitting right around 75, the car hasn't fired up, so it's kind of just ambient. So there we have it. Now if there's any obstructions or any weird things happening, we should be able to pick that up. Let me just turn this pump off here. So now going forward, anytime there's a hiccup in flow, we'll be able to catch it on the flow meter instantly in the logs. Uh, rather than waiting, you know, for long outages to cause IAT to temps to, to rise or even uh, intercooler fluid temps is going to be kind of neat to plot right against the, uh, you know, driving conditions and the pump flow in the logs. All right, that concludes our mods to this intercooler reservoir for now. Based on the data logs, we're going to determine how to go from there or what has to happen next. It's also worth pointing out, it looks like this lid has stopped leaking. Now that I have um, that bump grinded down and the, the, the base of the lid can sit flat, it no longer seems to be weeping, even with the old O-ring. Of course, uh, out driving on the street's gonna be the real test.
here we're just cruising around in the back neighborhoods going real slow about 30 mile an hour trying to cool down the blower and look at our IAT too we're still around 170 degrees pulled off several degrees in this short drive and where's we're the blower at, at? we're at 202 103 170 say those again we're at 202 102 169 <laughs> All right, we just went on a small ride. It's a little warmer today. I mean, it's kind of winter, uh, Florida winter. You know, today's up to 84, which is a little warmer than most of my test drives. And look at this. You can spot the red gauge right away. I set them up that way to catch my attention. IAT2, we're sitting at about, can you see that? 164 right now, sitting here idling. Uh, it was sitting like 166, 167 driving. I can see the fluid pumps flowing. I got full flow on my, my pump. In a cooler fluid sitting around 106, which is really not that hot. Um, not sure why this is cooling so horrible. Has a monstrous GT500 heat exchanger. It's got big lines, fans, um, maybe something with the intercooler core under the blower. I believe it's a stock one in there, stock one that's been modded a little bit. Need to do some digging here, figure this out. So, this is pretty interesting. This tank's so hot I can barely touch it. This one, cool to the touch. Yet they're both in the engine bay. All of this heat that's heat soaking into here is going to the heat exchanger, dissipating. So that, that cooling system here is working super hard just to pull out engine bay heat. Doesn't seem like the most efficient way to do things. I'm gonna say this lid is mostly sealing. <laughs> Still have a small leak here. I, I wonder, I don't know if, it's, if we can tell where that is coming out of. That's an O-ring. If it's leaking out of here. Interesting. Almost have this fixed. Almost. All right, so our flow sensor has proven to be quite a success. It's shown us our pump isn't cavitating and we have another issue to chase. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of questions on this flow sensor, so let's take a look at my screen and I'll show you what I got. Found this on Amazon. Unfortunately, it's no longer available, so I can't give you the exact part number, but if you just go on Amazon, there's lots of them around. Uh, look here, uh, $20, $14, $16, they're not real expensive, <laughs> at least not on Amazon, you can find them on other sites for $250, $300. I wasn't concerned about quality, I just wanted a pump that would withstand um, short duration, check for my pump cavitating and move on. I've had it for about three months now and I've grown to love it, so much so in my logs that I'll probably replace it with something good if this ever fails. Looking back at my screen, we've got the MS3 here, how did I wire it up? I wired the Hall Effect sensor into a digital frequency input. I went into here, I went to uh, speed and gear sensors. I went to VSS3, turned it on, added it, my digital frequency in three, which is what I wired it up to. Now this matches VSS1, so the calculations in here affect it, and that's why my pulses are divided out and show here, uh, what's I think 37, Pulses is roughly what it shows in normal operation. Uh, in future videos, we're gonna calculate this and convert it to gallons per minute and get something a little more usable since we like this sensor. At that time, I'm thinking I may even go into shaft speed sensors and maybe add it in here somewhere. See if I can multiply it out and maybe alter the numbers and get it to actually show in gallons per minute here instead of just a arbitrary flow number. Uh, so watch out for that, it'll be coming soon. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy, guys. Be kind to one another. See you later. About to try a little four-wheeler mod here. Got this ignition module. Not sure if it's snake oil or if it's for real. Claims to remap my timing curve, uh, increase RPM, and give me as much as five horsepower increase. Seems kind of high since it's just a little 350, but uh, you know, I've done a few things to it. Uh, let's see. It's got, I added this oil cooler after blowing up the motor in the sand dunes. Kind of neat. Got some, what is it, dash four AN line. Tapped it off with this filter oil filter cover, so now I get a cooler. <laughs> Rebuilt the motor with a uh, higher compression, it's got a domed piston in there, a cam, exhaust, you know, minor stuff. And uh, yes, I have a wide band on my carbureted <laughs> quad. So yeah, let's see what it does. Well, looks like somebody already replaced this. I've got a junkyard card in here from an older O2. Well, get the new one in. Is that worth it? Uh, I 
gonna go with a not really. 150 bucks, 125, or whatever it cost. I do notice the extra RPM at the top. I think that's why it uh, maybe feels a little bit faster on the top end, the extra RPM, but remap timing curve, more power, I can't feel it.